Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the session, Realistic Design for Reliability in the Digital Age of Electronics. I have a few housekeeping items to share before we get started. Again, this year, we have a mobile app for the conference. If you already haven't downloaded, please do so to, for the most up-to-date current conference information. All sessions evaluations are in the app down on the bottom. You can find these sessions uh, at the bottom of the app within the, each session. Then. Click on the session evaluations link uh, to the bottom of the session to take you to the survey. It is very s important that you complete these session evaluations. The feedback received is very important for future conference planning and to give back to the session speakers. If you have any questions about the app, please ask any of the ASQ staff members who are walking around. Um, and now I'd like to introduce you to today's speaker. Dr. Tan received his PhD in electrical engineering from the University of Toronto in 1992. He has published 300 plus international journal and conference papers, given 10 plus keynote talks and 50 plus invited talks in the international conferences and several tutorials in the international conferences. He holds 12 patents and one copyright on reliability software. He has written four books and three book chapters in the field of reliability. He is the past chair of the IEEE Singapore section, senior member of the IEEE and ASQ distinguished lecturer of the IEEE Electronic Device Society and Reliability, Follow, fellow of the Institute of Engineers in Singapore, and fellow of the Sing Singapore Quality Institute. I now welcome Dr. Tan. All right, good morning, everyone. OK, so my talk is uh, shown here. Basically, it's about reliability. Well, in this session here, we'll look at some real example of the current product reliability, which I gather i done some work on the, to look at the different recall, especially on the automotive, and to understand that why the requirement on reliability actually is increasing. However, the cost need to be decreased for the product. That is the reason, not simply because they want to have more profits, that is a necessity on that. And um, I'll go through with you guys some of the real examples that I work with the company on how do you implement this design for reliability through what we call, which I have developed, is called the reliability sciences, rather than reliability engineering. Well, of course, when we, when we do the design for reliability for a company, we will have a financial saving, we will improve the customer satisfactions, we can enhance the product penetration. As for the individual, we are able to understand in more detail on the reliability issue, and we will therefore able to, for as a designer, able to provide, produce a better product design. Let's look at what is the real status on the fuel reliability for automotive electronics. I did a survey on the past from 1990 until 2015. You can see that in the 90s, in the decade of 90, the number of cars as recall in terms of percentage of sales is about 33%. When you come to the next decade on the 2000, it's increased to 38%. Then when we go to the last one, it's only about four years. The number of recall is already 39. So what is the trend? What do we see? We see that the number of cars being recalled back is increasing, which signifies that there is a reliability issue, the reliability getting worse. Okay, when we look at the number. 
when we when I go into the detail of looking at what are the failure percentage, we found that while well, being the today automotive are more electronic content than mechanical, 49% are really the, is due to the recall is due to the failure from the electronics. And um, you can see that that is almost 50%, and we believe that it will be more. The question is why it is so. Because our impression is that automotive technology is improving, it's becoming better. But it seems like the reliability is becoming worse. <clears throat> well, one of the answers, I mean, we can see that by looking at this diagram, you can see that, my goodness, the number of electronics in the car is so complex, first of all. Now, we all know that when complexity comes, something must be done if you want to keep the reliability better or even the same. Now looking at the number of components that you have, and then you're looking at the next graph, you can see that the yellow, the yellow bar represents the number of functions that electronics are supposed to perform in a car over the year. However, the orange bar represents the number of ICs, number of control units. You can see that while the function is increasing, but the number of hardware, number of integrated circuits is decreasing. So what it means is that for every individual control unit, the complexity has increased tremendously. And this definitely will cause a problem because the complexity of the IC in today's automotive are getting very complex. Not to mention that the operating environment for the automotive electronics is a lot higher than the consumer electronics. We don't need to look far, just looking at 2017 on the automotive recall. You can see that in Honda Accord, in July 18, Honda recalling 1.2 million cars in the United States over the battery sensor issue. So there's a Japanese make. We're looking at the German make, BMW. In May 30, they announced, BMW announced a recall of 45,000 units over the, on the 7 Series car in the United States due to the potential door faulty. Okay, there's a German make. Then looking at the Ford Motor, the US make. Then in June 29, they issued one safety recall with a recall of 400,000 due to drive shaft connection fault. All these are the brand name. All these are big company. But in 2017 alone, you can see that the number of cars that's been recalled that represent that the reliability of this car are not that good. All right? So, so it really, what we really want to say is this. With today's complexity, success will not come by accident. When the thing is simple, maybe you can take chance. But when complexity comes, especially for today's complexity, success will not come by accident. But it needs a balanced design, expert, and quality build, and a rigorous evaluation based on the best available knowledge of today's failure mechanism. We need to know the failure mechanism we can no longer go by chance. So when we want to study the reliability for the component or even the system, over the past 33 years of experience that I'm working on, basically I summarize it that we need five different areas. First is the failure mechanism. We need to know the failure mechanism, which is very much different from failure mode. Because failure mode is something that you can see, you can measure. Whereas the failure mechanism is the underlying physics and chemistry that causing the failure. We need to know the failure mechanism in order to solve the root cause problem. Now, again, a lot of reliability tests need to be done at the accelerated conditions because the time taken will be too long. So when we have an acceleration, when we perform the test at the accelerated condition, we need the acceleration model to extrapolate down to the operating condition. And this extrapolation 
is now. We need, in order to be accurate, we need to know the physics of failure. Okay, it's now uh, a lot of people in the industry are using the Arrhenius model, Boeing model, inverse power rule model, and so on. But those are more empirical. And in fact, I one of the work that shows that the inverse power rule model are not accurate at all if you were to look at the failure mechanism. So these two areas belong to the reliability physics. Then, of course, we need to do reliability testing. We need to determine the test. How, what are the tests to be performed? What are the screening plan and so on? What are the sample size and so on? That is in the regime of reliability testing. After we have a test, we got the data, we need to analyze statistically. So that is the reliability statistics. So in other words, in order to evaluate the entire reliability for your, whether the system or component, you need reliability physics, testing methodology, and the statistics all together. So it is a combination of the statistics and the physics. That is what makes things difficult. But as you can see, things are, in fact, very complex. All right, so this has been done in the past. People are doing this over the year. And uh, since the reliability started in the 50s, progress has been done significantly. And there's a lot of knowledge on these things. But now come to the challenge. The challenge is that the customer today, they want to reduce the cost, but they want to improve the product reliability and performance. Why? Why do they want to do that? A simple example that I can quote is the Internet of Things. We all know that Internet of Things is inevitable. It will be coming. It connects everything together. And you can see that just a simple example, you have a 247 billion email messages per day. Just this alone. Now, some of the email can be very important. You cannot afford to drop it. It could relate to safety. It could relate to danger. So with so, such a big data flowing in the Internet of Things, we better make sure that the hardware that is responsible in the inter IoT has to be reliable. Right? So therefore, the reliability requirement is increasing. However, the cost has to be reduced. Because IoT is supposed to be for everyone. If the things are expensive, regardless how good is the IoT functionality is, no one will want to get it. Therefore, this so-called good technology will totally become useless. So we want it to be reliable because we cannot afford to, missing, to have a missing information. But on the other hand, in order to, be, to make the LT to become popular, we need to be low cost. And that's the reason why today we are facing a very big challenge. That is the cost-effective reliability. Now, all the while, people can do a very good reliability, and the consequences is high cost, high prices. But the paradigm has to shift, because we have to do a cost-effective reliability, availability, maintainability, and security. All this must be cost-effective, and this method is waiting for us to develop. That is what is a challenge of today, OK? Now, we all know that if you want to improve the performance, we need to increase the complexity of the circuit. This will reduce the reliability, as we know. When things are complex, it will reduce the reliability. On the other hand, if you want to have a good reliability, probably we can use redundancy, or we can use a component that's more reliable. But this, will Im this can improve the reliability, but this will incre increase the cost. But what we want today is to have uh, improved performance, at the same time, reduce cost. Now, this doesn't seem to gel together, because these two are going in the opposite direction. So the question is, is there a solution? This is a challenge that we are facing today. 
Now, if you look at the current reliability engineering, how do we ensure the reliability? We do the design, we, we fabricate it, we obtain the, we, we do the reliability test, we got the data, we do failure analysis, and then we find out what is the failure mechanism. Maybe we can go back and do some creative action to make it better. So what is the, this is what is the common practice today. So the bottom line is that product must have been designed and made before we know the reliability. But this can be costly because it can end up in redesign, it can end up in reprocess. All this will increase the cost and the time to market. So therefore, we are facing the challenge. This one will increase the cost, but we cannot afford, especially for the IoT and all those other things. So the question that we ask is, can we, can we design and produce a product with the specified reliability before it is made. Meaning that you gotta determine the, the age of the person before it is born. The kind of things. All right, so can we do that? Is it possible? Because if we can do so, then we can do it right at the first time in terms of reliability. There's no more redesign, no more reprocessing, no more waste of material because, for example, the handphone is using, the cell phone only used for two years, what for you use a very good material. No more wasting of time, all these things. So if we can do this, then of course we can reduce the cost and the reliability tests are just for the confirmation of the product reliability, that's all. It's the only a confirmation, it's not for evaluating the product reliability. So can we do that? In fact, we have to do that if we were to meet this paradigm shift, okay? And the good news is that I developed this new discipline, it's called reliability science. And uh, honestly, I'm not the founder because many people have been doing this thing. What I did is I putting them together and with the powerful digital computer today, with the powerful digital hardware as well as the software, this becoming a reality. This becoming the possibility. You see, design for reliability has been mentioned long time ago. And people trying to use the built-in reliability using the FME and so on. That is good. You see, but FME will tell you which failure will be more dominant, more important based on the RPA number or based on the action priority. But the question is that FMEA does not tell you when will this failure occur. There's no when. But we need to know when. Because failure bounds will occur, but we need to know when it will occur, whether it will occur after their service life. So that when is what's missing. And so therefore, I developed this reliability science that is to really to explore the underlying science that govern the decretation and the failure mechanism. So by, those, by so doing, I will be able to understand the impact of the environmental condition on the degradation rate or the failure rate of the product before the product is made. And I can also, by knowing the size, I can also know that during the reliability test, whether the actual failure mechanism is it relating to the actual operating condition. You see, many times we want to get the reliability data, we perform some reliability tests. But the actual failure mechanism that occurred in the test could be totally different from what is happening in the field. And you cannot really do any extrapolation, it's meaningless. So, but when we know the science, if we know the physics, we know the chemistry, we will be able to do so. And then with the test data, or even without the test data, because we can do simulation, that we are able to determine by incorporating the reliability statistics, we're able to determine the product lifetime under the different conditions. So what I did is that I use a soft, today the software are able to help us to identify how the bond is breaking under different environment, how the defect can be accumulating. And so we can actually do reliability tests in the computer instead of in the chamber. So we can play around with this, and therefore we are able to do that. 
And so by knowing that under different reliability tests, what kind of failure mechanism that will help us to choose the right reliability test so that we will not waste time just producing the data that is honestly waste time useless. And so with this, when we know how the product lifetime under different operating conditions can be estimated, we can find a way to improve the product reliability before it is made. And then even if it is made, we can find out how to screen them out so that your customer will not receive the part that will fail and result into a recall. That is what reliability science is trying to do. And if you were to look at a complex system, reliability science through the reliability mathematics, we were able to identify which part in the system are more important of in, in terms of reliability. What kind of reliability requirements should it be for that component so that the entire system will be good? So in this way, we're able to know which are the parts that should be given more attention in the design, should be given more attention in, uh, in, the, in the selections so that we will know, so that we do not need to have all the parts to be reliable because that will be costly. If we know that which part is going to be important, therefore, we will only those parts, we make, it, make sure that it is highly reliable, the rest may be not. So this will not increase the cost of the system unnecessary. Okay, so we can do this thing. There are mathematics that we have developed to do so. So, so with this concept that we have, now we let's show some example. I show example on the IC, for example. In the integral circuit, there are billions of transistors. They are interconnected together. And over the prolonged operation, this interconnect, actually, the resistance will increase by itself. A phenomenon, what we call electron migrations. So, so what you can see is that as the current is passing through the interconnect, this under the electron microscope, you can see that the interconnect starts to open up to a void. Okay, and um, and with this, we are able to. Well, it's somehow the animation doesn't work. We are able. I have developed the software. We can actually. Repro reproduce exactly what is going on in the real life. All right, and uh, and then and then we are able to see the void. Actually, what I'm trying to see, oh, it's here now. So we can see that those dots are the vacancy. Those dots are the void in the material. Under the current movement, they will move. This move will end up. All this void will gather at a point, as a point here. And um, at the point, the bottom graph is showing the experimental result. The, the other graph is showing my simulation result where the location is exactly the same. Another real, another situation on the interconnect failure is the stress induced because of the stress. So you can see that today I see if they're using a silicon oxide dielectric, you can see that after some time because of the stress release, they, the, the, Actually, they will be going, the void will be going across the VR. You can see that the VR is narrowing down. But when you have the same structure by a change of the material using some kind of low key material, you can see that what happened is that when you, in a prolonged operation, the VR uh, or the defect will not go across the VR but go along the VR. That's why you can see the difference in the experiment. So, what, we are, what I'm trying to show you is this. We are now able to reproduce exactly what we see experimentally, but in the computer. Okay, by changing a different material, we know what will happen. Then if you're looking at the whole entire circuit, so we do not need to mix the circuit anymore. What we can do is that with this layout, we can actually fabricate the IC in the computer before it is fabricated. And from there, we can calculate the temperature distribution, how the temperature distribution during the operation, what are the current density distribution, what's the temperature, and from there, we are able to determine which part in the circuit is weakest. So all this 
we no need to wait it to be produced, but we can already know how to prevent this, and therefore we can improve the reliability. Talking about the lifetime, okay, as I showed you just now, the void is moving, and um, so, so we want to determine, not only that we need to determine the location, but we also need to know the lifetime. And the lifetime turned out to be very complicated based on this physics, no longer a simple equations. And you can see that when I do this experiment, the empirical equation they give us an error about more than 100%, whereas our model is about 30%. So, so it works. And for some circuit, when you design like this, like power circuit, you have so many contacts. Our intuition was say that when you have a current, the current will be distributed evenly. But through our calculation, it showed that it is not. The current are all concentrated at one point. So you will not know it until you calculate it, until you're able to simulate this. Another example that I'm going to show you is that in the high power LED, when you're in the moisture condition, a common reliability test that we do is 8585. You can see that this, um, the, the moisture can go in and up, in and out. And from there, you can see how the moisture path will be first from the outside encapsulation, they don't go into the dye attach. So, so it's supposed to move, but uh, somehow it doesn't move because we can actually, when we do the reliability test, we put the device into the chamber, it's a some moisture, when you take it out, the moisture will evaporate and put it in again. So we are able to show how the moisture is distributed inside the package. So if you were to look at the circuit, and now another one for the switching move power supply circuit, people are designing this circuit here, and they do the layout according to the circuit. Now then there will be a different heat dissipation. The high heat dissipation can affect the adjacent component, and you can separate them up. Okay, put the heat high power consumption at the bottom so that the heat generator will not affect the other component. But either way, we can calculate that the temperature of the component can be so high, 500 over degree, so for sure it will fail. All right, we do not need to build those because when you build, it will fail. So what can we can do? We can do calculation by, by playing around with the dimension of the component that will increase the, the enhance the heat dissipation, moving around the different position, we can actually reduce the temperature from 500 overs to 37 degree and so on. This will definitely enhance the lifetime of the circuit board. All right, I got many more examples. Due to the time limitation, I will not able to show all. But all what we can do is that now we are able to perform such a simulation. Now we can actually predict the reliability, predict where the weakest point is using computer. People will ask me, you have a special software? No. The software that I use is very general. Okay? So because in the today in the power because of the advancement in the digital electronics, the computer is powerful. Therefore people who write this modeling software can become powerful. And so with the knowledge of the detailed failure analysis we are able to do those things that I show you. Okay? So with this reliability science, the reason I say reliability science is because I go down to the atomic bonding. I go down to how the material defect, the vacancy is going in. So when with this reliability science, we are now able to predict the product reliability even before it is made. And that is what we need in today's. Um, environment. And so we can also determine the right reliability test condition to verify the product reliability or in a computer. So therefore, we can now incorporate the reliability science into a product design to make this design for reliability a real thing. Not quant qualitative, but quantitative. And what do I use the software? Standard finite element analysis, MATLAB, Relasoft. Very commercially available. Okay? 
you do not need a special software, but you, what you need is people to sit down, to use the software, to write the equations, to put the physics into the equation to do the simulations. All right. So, so the takeaway that we have is that reliability requirement keep on increasing, as I show you, and but the cost must keep on decreasing. That is our challenge. And what I'm showing you is that reliability signs are now possible with today's digital world, digital age. I remember when I was a young failure analysis engineer in 1984 with Fairchild Semiconductor. We got to figure out, we open up the IC, we open up the product, we look at where is the defect. There are so many defects. We have to guess which one is the real cost. I, at that time, I hope that there is a way for me to identify which one can give me a real answer. But we can't. We have to base on the senior, based on the experienced person. They will tell us, likely this is the one. Right? But now, we know it. Because we know exactly where by a powerful computer. In fact, we can do all the different simulations in such a way that we will know that which one will fail first. They are able to do that. So, so this digital, the advancement in the digital electronics and the advancement in the software are really here to solve the problem that we are facing in the product reliability. It is essential for the cost-effective design for reliability. As I say that, <clears throat> there are many examples that I have. You can go to my website, my personal website. There are different papers, and uh, there are also different animation, uh, not animation, the real simulation, that is shown in my website. So you can actually really see the different example. Okay? And I got to mention that a lot of these examples are the real case that I did with company. It's not hypothetical, even though I'm in a uni university, but because of this, this platform that I developed, a lot of companies coming to me, I'm solving a lot of real industrial problem. So with that, I thank you for your attention. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much for the presentation. It was great. Um, one question about the um, use of the reliability data. Is there a way to, or have you considered how to use the reliability data to predict a uh, signal that could be sent via IoT be, um, to, say, the network or the cloud that says this failure is about to occur because, say, the temperature is increasing or on electronics, it's difficult to predict, and I'm looking for the signal to go to IoT to tell the service technician to go fix that part. Yes. Thank you for the questions. It's very good. It, it is possible. For example, a recent case that I did is looking at the antenna and um, looking at the network path. And so I was able to see that if a certain component is failing, how the signal can get distorted, how the signal is separated, because sometimes we have a multi-path. So how the signal will channel from one, from a maybe two path into, or concentrated into a few path, and that will create a high temperature. So, so that's a recent case that I did, uh, looking at the multi-path communications. So therefore, it is possible, and um, I mean, with this platform, there are many things becoming possible. It's just that, I need to get the people to sit down to build your, the system that you are concerning, and therefore we are able to simulate. As I showed you early on, I am able to, even for the circuit, I show you a simple circuit, I am able to show you how the current density distributes itself, how the temperature distributes itself. Likewise, for the entire system, it is possible. Yeah. All right, thank you for your time, and don't forget to do the survey at the end of the app. Thank you.